let's see how many pajamas we have here. So let's count them. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take two off, just like that. And now, how many do we have remaining? Well, let's count them. One, two, three, four, and five. So there are five remaining. Subtraction is where you have an amount and then you subtract or remove a certain amount and the difference is what's left. So these two have really complicated names. I think one of them was called the subtrahend, but you don't need to remember that. Okay, so for example, in this equation, we have nine and then we're taking away five. One, two, three, four, five. So how many are there unmarked? Four. One, two, three, four are left. All right, so now we're gonna do this with two digit numbers. So well, first, let's try this way because obviously it's got to work for all numbers, right? So let's say you have these two small things because I don't want to get too entrenched in this right of drawn circles. And we're gonna subtract one from another and see how it goes. Two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so here are 35 circles. Erase seven of them. Now we can erase 14 of them. And we just need to erase four more. All right, now count them up. How many are remaining? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. But that wasn't very efficient, wasn't it? We could have done it a much quicker way. That's what I'm going to show you in this video. Let's take these two numbers and stack them on top of each other. So, 35 minus 18. You might want to start with the simpler example, actually, so you can just get used to this. Let's say we have 28 minus 12. And remember to stack them just like we did in our addition video so that the ones place is perfectly aligned. The tens place and all other places after that will be aligned because of that. Okay. So now all we need to do is uh, the same thing as addition, but using subtraction. So instead of 8 plus 2, we would do 8 minus 2 equals 6. 2 minus 1 is 1. 28 minus 12 is 16. All right. Now let's try this example. But it gets a little more tricky. 35 minus 18. First of all, we have 5 minus 8. Wait a second. Now first, uh, I'm just going to tell you this big little rule. You always got to stack the bigger number on top of the smaller number when it comes to subtraction. Because if you stack or put the smaller number first and then the bigger number, you're going to get a negative result. Okay. So, 5 minus 8. We don't know. We can't use negative numbers in our answer. What are we going to do? This? No, that's illegal, man. So... Instead, what we're going to do is this guy is going to ask for a borrow from this three. What do I mean? Well, what's going to happen is this five is too small to conquer eight. So it calls for reinforcement from this three. But this three is actually a 30. Remember that. But uh, for in place value. If you've learned place value. So, this 30 can give over one of its tens so that this 5 can get uh, over this 8. And why can't it give a smaller value than 10? Because then we have a decimal in, uh, in here. This, is, uh, this 3 needs to be a whole number because it's just one digit, man. So, we have this 30, and this 5 needs to borrow only one 10. It will always 
bottle and you need to borrow only one ten unless you're subtracting more than one number. So, 30 minus 10, which goes to this 5, is 20. So, there's a 2 in there. So, this 3 becomes a 2, and this 5 is now 15, because 10 plus 5 is 15, of course. So, now, 15 minus 8, 7. 2 minus 1 is 1, 17. Now that was pretty slow, but as we go on and you get more experience at this, which uh, you could call borrowing, which is also kind of like a reverse regrouping, it's going to get faster and faster over time. And in some cases, you can't use this method at all, like when we subtract three and four digit numbers. Let's try a more complicated one now. Okay, so for number three, let's say we have 965 and we're subtracting it from 877. Now, obviously here, the top, uh, biggest number is stacked on top, but it looks here that not only is 5 smaller than 7, but 6 is smaller than 7 too. What a dilemma. So, uh, once again, well, uh, here's a reminder that 65 is not only 60 but plus 5, but can also be regrouped as 50 plus 15. So, this becomes 5 and 50, and this becomes 15, because you add 110. So, 15 minus 7. That's going to be 8. But now, 5 minus 7 is going to be harder. Why? Well, we're going to have to borrow from this guy. So, 9 gives up. So, here's a reminder once again that this 9, which represents 900, can be grouped off into 800 and 100, which then joins with the 6, or ra that rather the 5 in this scenario. Because remember, we did this. So, this becomes 8, and this is a 15. So now, 15 minus 7, 0, 8, 8. Or 88. Now let's do one more example and then let's it go for Okay, so this example is going to use some tricky tricks. So let's say we have 4,056 minus. 3, 37, 58. Yeah, good choice of numbers. All right, so 6 minus 8 doesn't work. So you know the deal by now. This 50 becomes a 40. This 6 gets the extra 10. 16 minus 8 is 8. But now we come to a problem. How can you borrow from a zero if the uh, zero represents nothing? Well, there are two ways to do this trick. Number one is borrowing from this 40 as a whole, making it 39. But the other one I feel is a little more clever. It shows the S. We're going to take this and make it negative number, negative one. So now this becomes this extra one, 14. 14 minus 5 is 9. Now we have negative 1 minus 7? That's not going to work. So instead, we borrow from the 4,000. And this becomes 3,000, but this is negative 100. Negative 100 plus 1,000 becomes positive 900. Think of it as adding negative 1 and 10. 
So, this becomes 9, minus 7 is 2, 3 minus 3 is 0, 2, 98, that's it. Thank you everybody for watching.